what's up guys and welcome back. Before we get into today's video, a quick word from our sponsors. Thanks, Steve. And thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this episode. Now more than ever, our internet reliance has been rapidly increasing. From streaming our favorite shows to keeping in touch with our loved ones and even our banking is mostly done online these days. We'd like to think our information is safe, but as our online footprint increases, so does our need for proper security. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects your information by encrypting all the data you send through the internet, keeping anyone unwanted from seeing it. Another great reason to use a VPN is because content from streaming services can be restricted based on what country you're in. Well, with Surfshark, you can solve that problem simply by changing your location. Not only is it good for people who want to keep up with their favorite shows, but it can also be a critical tool for those who live in countries that heavily censor or monitor its citizens. He was looking at you, Kim. Right now, Surfshark has a really good deal on. By using my link in the description, promo code Chris Ramsey, that's Chris Ramsey. Once again, it's Chris Ramsey. You will get 85% off, which means for something like a couple bucks a month, you can be fully protected. Plus, you'll get three months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you try it and you don't like it, you can simply cancel your subscription, get your money back and buy yourself a cheap cup of coffee instead. Back to you, Steve. Thank you, Surfshark. Thank you for that. Uh, today, we have a very special puzzle, actually, by a puzzle maker by the name of Robert Yarger, who also helped craft. If you haven't seen this video, definitely go check that out. Uh, Robert is known for his intricate work, but also his very rare items, because he only makes a few of uh, the puzzles that he makes. This particular one, Stickman number 34, also known as the Dwemer or Dwemer construct puzzle, based on this elven race in the Elder Scrolls who built items that look similar to this. Uh, this one, however, only 60 were made in the entire world. I was lucky enough to pick one up. What's really interesting about this construct box and the way that it's assembled is that on the inside of, of this box, once you solve it, are more pieces to which you then have to deconstruct the entire puzzle, rebuild it for a second, a little bit more complex solution. Robert wanted to share the joy of not only solving a puzzle, but what designers go through when they build puzzles. Uh, as for that, my buddy Antoine, who enjoys how things are made, likes taking things apart, and I hand it off to him. He is then going to reconstruct it with the instructions, and I will then come in and solve the second part. So that's, that's what we got lined up for you today. Pretty cool puzzle, a pretty unique take at looking at a puzzle differently. The fact that it's two or three puzzles in one is very, very cool. So without any further ado, like this video, subscribe if you're new here, and let's get into solving this puzzle. Here it is, the famous Stickman puzzle box. Well, one of them. This one was extremely hard to come by, and I've been looking at it for a while, just because it looks like, it looks like what you would expect from a puzzle box, and those are usually my favorite. The ones that just uh, have mystery written all over them. So uh, for this video, this one, like I said, is gonna be a bit different. We're gonna do the uh, initial solution. I'm gonna hand it off to Antoine, who's gonna disassemble it and he's going to reassemble the second solution. So let's get it, actually let's get a timer out here and start her up. So I noticed that this cog wheel here turns, which turns this mechanism and then it stops about here. Okay, this moves, oh, this moves here, which kicks that up. And because I did that, this thing here seems to want to protrude, whatever that is. A lot of little things going on on the inside here. Oh. Okay. So that's about as far as that goes that way. Boom. Okay, that is now completely turned around. Oh man, this is strange. like a pin here as well. Okay, so these corners shift. This one does anyways. Hmm. That's going backwards, weird. Look at this. Goes that way and then it goes that way. Boom. Is that supposed to come apart? 
I really hope so. I think I have to get these corners unlocked. Oh, so each one of these corners, like that's like a locked position. So you can see here, this corner has like a straight edge and a round edge. And I think I have to make them all face uh, the other way to, to extract them. Or maybe this way, that would make sense. So that comes out here. This does not, so that, that piece is still stuck in there. Sides out. Okay, so it's just this corner here left. This one needs to be lined up as well. Boom! There you have it. The inner mechanisms here, the intricacies of this is pretty insane. So the whole goal here was to have all these corners, as you can see, like this one now has a peg there for some reason. So I, by turning this thing, I've gotten this corner to uh, to line up. See, the more I turn it, the more I can turn this. So this piece used to be like this. It had to be square. This one as well had to be square. This one as well, which is hard to do. Boom, now that's square. And this one as well using, uh, using this thing here, which I think probably shouldn't have come apart, but I guess that's something for Antoine to figure out. So there we have it. That is the first piece. So the, again, make sure all of these sides were, oh, and then there's this as well. I don't know what this is, okay. The whole plot here was to get the corners uh, from the round sides all the way up to the straight sides so that we can extract it from the box here. It was sort of stuck in these grooves here. Now, in the box, apparently solution number two is a lot harder. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it easy. I'm not gonna be as, forceful because it's uh, really hard to come by. I don't want to break any of these pieces here. He says as he dumps everything out. So another corner piece here, I guess, to replace. Oh my God, some more cogs. Whatever this thing is, whatever's in here. Oh man, that is cool. All right, so that is part one. I'm gonna have Antoine sit in here because I don't want to see how this is built and he is going to assemble the next part in a quick time lapse. Let's go. Two. So first round obviously didn't take me that long to figure out. Again, I'm not sure if, you know, maybe I moved a part out of position where I wasn't supposed to. This is still a piece of wood. This is all, you know what I mean? So it's very fragile. Uh, it took Antoine about an hour and a half to uh, rebuild this. One thing he did tell me though, is that I will be using this not not for the screwdriver part, but for this part. He says, if I didn't tell you that, you probably wouldn't have figured it out. You probably would never have gotten to it. So it's a good clue to have. And we're gonna start the timer here. Now, let's just take a good look at this thing here while we got it in front of us. So you can see the mechanics are entirely different. Uh, the way they're manipulated, used, and some of them are even taken out completely. Like there are pieces here that, uh, that are no longer good. So crazy that he had the foresight to to make uh, a modular puzzle, if you will. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and try and open this. So if I move this here, oh, that's really cool. Oh, it's like a crank. We've got this lever here. Okay. Not sure what that does. So 
this thing came out from underneath this. There's like a wheel here. It came out. We're going to try and use this here. Is it going to do anything? Maybe that was just to retract it. Does this slide downwards or upwards? Doesn't seem to move. Okay. Oh, here we go. Whoa. Okay, that's weird. Go all the way to the end. is so bizarre like all these cogs and wheels are shifting and I don't know why they're shifting that goes back in okay now I've turned it more Look at that movement. It goes from here all the way to here. Really cool, cool movement. What does that do? Does that free up anything? Maybe it goes around here again. Or is that where it started? Oh, this moves that corner. So that corner is now um, as you can see, the right angles need to be lined up in the corner. And if, as soon as this moves here, notice how that turns and it makes the round parts go under this, uh, these edges here. So that is the right placement for that. So that is done. This one over here, however, I don't know how that's attached to anything. It doesn't seem to be moving with anything else. None of these corners are moving at all. Okay, so that is attached. This lever here that we discovered is attached to this corner, but it's not moving. There's something preventing it from moving. Oh, it's that peg. Oh, it has to come out. I've now pulled out the corner from there completely. Okay, so that corner is out. Okay, so that corner doesn't have to be out. Uh, it's hard to see with the light here, but I put it back. So this corner here moves and then I can place it so that it's like this, which allows this arm to move around. Oh, and then this can come out. Hello. Now we've got an extra piece here that's protruded. What a weird, what a weird little piece. Okay, now this has come apart. <laughs> I'm just gonna ask Antoine if uh, if I can take pieces out. Antoine, is that okay? I guess. Is it? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I don't want to break it and I don't want to do anything I shouldn't be doing. Okay, so we're going to take this pin out. Oh, now, see, now this corner moves here. What that allowed us to do is move this corner here. So we go here, which was weird because that corner was already at a right angle. And then we have this piece that comes out. The only corner left is this one here, because this one we can place. This corner here is the only one left. And how that turns is attached to this giant arm. Ah, so now as I turn this, boom. Yes, so it goes from here, follows that groove, goes here, this pops out. And now that corner should be able to lift out. Oh, there's this corner as well that I have to center out. So that's now centered out. Oh, so close. What's, oh, this one here is back here. Okay, these two are done. This one here, done. Ta-da! 
Uh, super weird, however, how you have to take some cogs out, uh, or at least, yeah, because those cogs are all kind of holding onto each other in here, but part of the puzzle to solve it, I guess, is taking the cogs out so that you're able to rotate these corners accordingly. Um, but what the amount of like ingenuity here is pretty crazy, especially if you look at this piece here. Cool. Well, there you have it. Okay. My final thoughts, uh, I'll give you my final thoughts on this. In hot day. Okay, final thoughts, final thoughts about this puzzle. I slightly regret not taking it apart myself. I think that in retrospect, that is part of what makes this puzzle fun is discovering how all the pieces work. And I couldn't truly appreciate that because I didn't do it, if that makes sense. I was worried that by reconstructing it, it would somehow give me information onto the solution and it wouldn't be as fun to solve, uh, however, solving it without knowing how the parts actually interacted with each other wasn't super satisfying. That's my bad, that's on me. I probably should have done it myself. That being said, it is a really, really interesting way of presenting a puzzle. Obviously very high quality. Uh, that being said, man, it, it is a beautiful piece. It's just a beautiful piece to look at. And I think that I will eventually attempt to reconstruct it down to the first solution, which would probably uh, give me some more appreciation about how this was made. So uh, let me know your thoughts below. Would you be the type of person to take it apart, put it apart, or would you rather not the solution be divulged to you and, and just have at it blindly? Let me know in the comments. We'll see you guys on the next video. Awesome. Peace.